Hello everyone, welcome back for this new episode of Coding Design System. Today we don't have George with us today um, as of last week because George is, is pretty busy right now, but, but we're very lucky because we don't have one guest but two guests today with the creator of Next himself, Sébastien Chopin. Hello Seb, how are Hello, you? Hello everyone, I'm fine, very fine. Uh, didn't sleep too much since the release uh, last night, but I'm pretty excited. Yeah, yeah, we're, we're going to cover this in a minute, and that will be pretty fun, I'm, I'm really sure of this. And we also have Constantin with us, who is our next ambassador. Hello, yeah. how are you? Great, perfect, thanks. Have nice weather, and we have next three as a release, release candidate, so yeah, everything's perfect so far. <laughs> That's awesome, sounds really great. So, um, so we are very lucky, um, as I said just before, because... Uh, today um, is the day just next the last release of the, the first version, the first release candidate of Next 3. That's it. Am I correct? Yes. Okay, You're so correct. could you give us some, uh, some insight of it and some presentation of it? Um, well, it's been uh, 18 months since we uh, wrote the first line of code of Next 3. Uh, it has been a bumpy road uh, in many ways. Uh, first was Vue 3, uh, that is uh, changing the game in terms of uh, usage, but also, uh, I mean, I'm thinking of the Composition API. It unlocks so many possibilities, but it also uh, breaks a part of the Vue ecosystem. So it's also taking time for, for the Vue community to upgrade slowly their uh, libraries. And on top of this, we wanted to rewrite the whole uh, core of the uh, framework to TypeScript. It has been a long debate in the team for a year, uh, and we are really happy to, uh, to, to, to have done the switch to TypeScript. And on top of this, uh, we wanted to support Vite, since uh, Evan also created a, a VIT, let's call it VIT. Uh, so we, we took it as a new challenge uh, since our Next two uh, framework and next one was using Webpack, and we Webpack is a, an amazing build to chain, and we want to support it as well. It has great performances. It might be slow, but the output is really optimized. So we took the uh, opportunity to create a new package called Unplugin that you may have seen. Uh, Anthony Fu has been working on it, which is an abstraction layer on top of this uh, build to chain giving uh, you a unified interface to create the plugins that will work for Rollup, Vit, or Webpack, and even more uh, to chain if we want to in the future. So Next3 officially supports Vit and Webpack. And I don't think any other web framework do this. And if it was not enough, we, we had another challenge, um, which is on the full stack part. In Next2 and Next1, we had this server middleware to create API routes, but we were lacking this um, uh, stable hot module replacement. Most of the time, it was restarting the whole Next server. Uh, we did some early work in 2018 with Puya that was called a workstation that we never released at the end. Uh, and on top of this, we wanted to have the possibility to make Next run into a serverless environment. So thinking AWS Lambda, uh, also, we had the Cloudflare workers that pop up, uh, I think, uh, early 2020. So we took also this opportunity to build uh, Nitro, which is a, a build-to-chain and a server engine that will actually uh, build your whole app. So we use Vite for your view app, but we also use uh, Rollup for your server parts. And we bundle everything for production. We also uh, bundle your node module, so at the end you have uh, an optimized output, which is less than a megabyte. Uh, it actually has a zero millisecond cold start on Cloudflare Workers. I mean, this is uh, bringing Next to another level in terms of deployment. You can deploy it absolutely everywhere, and it's really fast. We have code splitting on the client side, but we have code splitting on the server side, and that is just on the foundation part. The next step, we had to write all the new composable features so data fetching uh, uh, pages, system layouts, based on Vue 3. 
<laughs> they, uh, Fuya, Daniel, Montoni, um, the whole team uh, and the whole contributors did an amazing job on this. And thanks to the community and feedback, we were able to iterate since the beta in uh, October to the release yesterday. And it's about more than a, a thousand pull requests merged. 900 uh, closed issues. I mean, it has been crazy. And this, I think it's not over. This is just insane. And I'm going to just share my screen. So for, you're going to have a look at the, the, the announcement, which is just as long as just, I don't know, the Niagara Falls, something like that, because mm -hmm. this is just, this well, is I, I just to be a, incredible. Uh, this article. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, straight to the point, definitely. So yeah, that's that's awesome. And um, what what was the 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 amount of code that you rewrote for this uh, this release? Did, did you start from scratch for this new version, or, or did you yeah. reuse uh, some parts from uh, the we, next two? We, we started at first uh, making a branch on next two. It was to support Webpack five. It was the original version for next three, and then uh, we wanted to support Vue three. And at one point, we we're like, okay, let's start uh, fresh and we took pieces of next to code that we uh, refactored using TypeScript that allow us to uh, to create this bridge project uh, for next two users to uh, benefit from the next three features such as Nitro or Vit in development. Uh, but I, I I don't know how many lines has been changed. Uh, it, we started from scratch, but taking pieces best practice for the We've developed Next 1 and 2 for four years, so we were not going to erase everything, but instead picking uh, the right uh, the right code. Yeah, keeping the best parts and, yeah, and, and exactly. spreading it in, in the new project. Okay, awesome. And last, last thing is uh, ESM, because <laughs> like it was not uh, easy uh, enough. We had this ECMAScript uh, module that came up uh, as well with Bit, and the whole NPM ecosystem was not ready embrace ECMAScript, so between CommonJS and ECMAScript module, it was uh, it was difficult. That's why we also created this NGS organization to make this uh, ESM-friendly uh, tools and package that allow also next to run into Dino. Uh, and in long term, I want to make sure Next can be used in development with Dino. So Ooh. It's a big vision. For the yeah. future sounds great by the way uh sebastian forgot to mention but yesterday netlify just released edge functions and it's already compatible with next so okay uh, nice. no, okay okay so wait what <laughs> okay i'm i'm I, i'm aware of the of the um, the edge release at netlify but um how how it is possible to 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 be uh, compatible with next right now in dino and netlify in the edge function okay i want to know more about this one do you want to go ahead, Constantin? I mean, this all comes down thanks to Nitro. Uh, at the end, I'm not uh, the coder of Nitro, so <laughs> <laughs> I would not be able to explain. But yeah, the idea of Sebastian is basically to say, all right, we just build on the thing locally and then we ship it. But there is no dependency regarding uh, uh, Node engine or anything at all, because it probably compiles to V8 native uh, broader browser API at some point. And so at the end, it's just like writing low low level code like with Wasm or, yeah, I guess yeah. so. <laughs> so. So the point of uh, of Nitro and the suite of tools we have in NGS, um, we actually mocked uh, plenty of Node.js libraries that are used in development but not used in production. Uh, such as the file system, for instance, we don't need to watch file for production, but some libraries uh, require uh, FS, so we proxy this one by default. So at the end, the output generated by uh, Nitro of your Next app, uh, it's in the video uh, you have, it uh, generates a DAO output, and this DAO output uh, only includes JavaScript that can run even in your service worker. So since Dino uses V8, uh, it, the output can be deployed on Dino, Node, Cloudflare workers, and also your service worker. And Netlify edge function of simply using V8 uh, 
and like Cloudflare workers. So basically, it's, uh, since we were supporting Cloudflare workers, it's uh, just another signature we generate. So for this, I can uh, share with you, with you the Nitro documentation. Yeah, I'm gonna grab it. This one is getting a lot of traffic recently, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, just and we decided to make it uh, agnostic, so any other framework can uh, can depend on this. Because it's like a bit, it goes beyond. I recently spoke with Buya, and he told me that already some frameworks are using IPX. Yeah. Um. So yeah, hope that uh, we we are having a lot of frameworks using NGS shortly. Would be amazing. Exactly. Netlify is using APX for their image optimization. So that's uh, APX is our um, image provider. We have uh, by default in next image to optimize uh, the images resize. Uh, I think it was based on Sharp. Yeah. So what what what's your long vision with Nitro? This this is something pretty crazy from my perspective. Mm, it's the uh, it's hard to to, uh, to explain because it, it, I don't think it has been done before. It's a uh, it's a server engine that uh, removes in, remove itself for production. Uh, everything you use in Nitro becomes a dev dependency, so you don't even use a dependency. Uh, everything you install is a dev dependency using Nitro. So same for Next. And hey, you okay. actually build like you have uh, for view files they're built to JavaScript. Then with Nitro, all your files are transformed to uh, JavaScript at the end. But we only pick the code that is it is used, and we use Vercel uh, NCC under the hood mm -hmm. to track all the sub dependencies. So yes, my my dream is to be able to uh, develop uh, thanks to Nitro, making it universal, and uh, the more tools adopting this universal convention of making uh, sure that. Um, all your code is not node dependent to develop, uh, to run next dev in your browser without stack bits, which is also uh, using a kind of node under the hood. Uh, so yeah, don't need to, I don't want to install node anymore if I want to go next, but I think it's about a year or two years vision. Yeah, I uh, see. At the end also, you don't need to manage a VPS yourself. And since it's edge, uh, you also get like the fastest possible uh, response time. So meaning that you don't need to deal with CDN as much because it's handled for you already. Um, so yeah, less work on the uh, DevOps team, let's say. Yeah, exactly. We, we The output of Nitro, so the, this was for the future of, of uh, Nitro, but so far what you get with Nitro is uh, a piece of code that you can deploy on the edge. So on Cloudflare workers. So basically your website has server side rendering into the CDN. So it answers in 70 milliseconds anywhere in the world. So you don't need the load balancer or anything else. Which is server side rendering. So we call it edge side rendering. Okay. It's it's totally new paradigm of a new vision of how to deploy and to host every kind of application and share the same code base all over the world um exactly yeah yeah it's totally the future we we saw it um in in different uh different areas with with um i don't know distributing li like um like solution like api video which is doing exactly the same thing to distribute the video by by sharing um with edge computing uh some 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 kind of, of content but it's just for static asset here we are, we are talking on distributing the rendering all around the world um, in, in the proximity of the, your end users. This is just, this is just totally crazy. Exactly. <laughs> so, so far, uh, Cloudflare uh, work has a five, mega, uh, five megabyte limit. So basic next to three apps works perfectly because it's less than a megabyte. Also, uh, you can create API routes with next to three and Nitro. So you can also deploy an API that is you know, fetching content, transforming it, uh, on the edge as well, so uh, that's that's a new paradigm. And so far, it's five mega uh, megabyte limit, but they are planning on expanding it. So basically, I think in a year, uh, 
edge state rendering will become more and more popular. You literally don't have to manage anything and you will be as close as you can to your end user. Okay, okay, so this is just, I have to just adjust my mental model around this one, but this is just totally, totally crazy. I, I love it. Um, By the way, I'm not sure if it's anyhow related, but could it even be deployed somehow to uh, Web3 or any DAP uh, approach? But as long as they run JavaScript, yes. Okay. What we made, and I think that's the moment uh, Puya blowed my mind when uh, when he did Nitro, was he sent me a, a GitHub page link. And this GitHub page uh, on the first load was uh, registering a service worker. And next, every time I was refreshing, I had server-side rendering on a static page. So basically, we were able to make next run inside your service worker of your browser. So that's, no <laughs> one has done this before. So Yeah, it, it definitely remind me what we are um, doing with Backlight because um, let me show you. Um, so in... When you are working with Backlight, you are, um, you've got access to this, this online editor uh, for your design system. And when you are working on your different components, you have this rendering view on, on the right side. And this rendering view is generated using Vit. And so everything is handled by Vit, but nothing is running into the server. Everything is running in service workers inside your browsers directly. So we forked Vit to... to Port it and have it running in a service worker um, in a project named Browservit, which, which is, yeah, <laughs> you know, creativity. Yeah. We are developers, naming is hard. <laughs> and, um, and, and but, but this is just insane because, because you, you, you don't have to, to, to load everything and you don't rely on network bandwidth issues or something like that. You just have to load it in your brother and everything is running fine because everything is just running in the brother. So um so yeah this is definitely a new way to think the web um with the the, the browser as a virtual machine a rendering engine and we are just distributing the the logic assets from the age and pushing it yeah. into, into the the end users. That's way we share the same uh, vision. Yeah that yeah really nice. yeah but you are definitely one step further with Nitro with something that is um probably more agnostic. Than, than what we are uh, we are doing uh, uh, here with backlight, but but we definitely have to have a look and see how we can yeah approach different projects because uh, yeah I, I, and I, I've been talking with Puya and he also plan to use Vit uh, for building not only roll up for Nitro. So I think uh, take a look yeah. at Nitro. I think we can see some synergy here. Yeah, definitely. I'm sh I'm sure we can do we can do great things together and by sharing our visions. This is this is really great. <laughs> So thank you very much for being with me today. It was really great to have you too um, for this stream. And um, yeah, I hope to see you again for the next episode uh, quickly when we're going to fix everything uh, and having it working better in, in a better interaction between Backlight and, and Next and Vue and so on. So um, well, it, it was a, a pleasure. I think it's my first stream and it definitely uh, make me want to do more. Awesome. <laughs> I take it as a compliment. <laughs> You're doing a great job. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, see you soon. Thank you again. And uh, see you next week, folks. Bye.